Hello, everyone, and welcome to Introduction to Causal Inference in Epidemiology. I am very excited about this course, which I have been teaching to PhD students in epidemiology here at Federal University of Pelotas in Brazil. The reason why I decided to record this series of video lectures is that I received positive feedback from my students about this course, and also from students from other institutions who watched uh, the lectures available here in my YouTube channel. However, the lectures are recorded in Brazilian Portuguese and therefore not really useful to non-Portuguese speakers. So in the hope of making the course content more accessible and useful to a wider audience, I decided to make the effort of re-recording the video lectures, this time in English. This will take a lot of time from me but I do believe that time dedicated to any initiative aiming at disseminating knowledge is time well spent. So this is the first of a series of videos. And in this video in particular, I would like to talk about the course program. So this video will be structured in three main topics. First, I will describe the teaching goals that I have with this course. Then I will talk about the prior knowledge that I expect you to have so that you can benefit the most from this course. And then I'll briefly list the course contents. So starting off with the course goals, the general goal of this course is to introduce theoretical and methodological aspects for defining and estimating causal effects based on the potential outcome model. Guys, if some of this terminology here is not familiar to you at this stage, don't worry. Teaching what all those names mean and how they can be used for causal inference is a big part of this course. And I also have three specific goals. The first one is to present the main theoretical aspects of the potential outcomes model, so you guys can have a pretty good understanding of what this model means and how it can be used. The second specific goal is to teach tools for systematically representing and exploiting causal assumptions. As you guys will see throughout this course, and I'll try to hammer this in your head as much as I can, Causal assumptions are a mandatory part, are a big, big, big part of causal inference. So it is important to have tools for systematically dealing with them. And the third specific goal is to provide sufficient knowledge so you guys can understand the main aspects of causal inference analysis. This is an introductory course, so it is important that you guys don't expect to have full understanding of all aspects required for any kind of causal inference analysis but I do believe that after watching those lectures, you have a pretty good understanding of the main conceptual aspects of causal inference analysis, which we will equip you for further studies. And on that note, I would like to clarify right at the start that we will only consider a single time fixed binary exposure or treatment variable, a single causal effect parameter, and a single estimation method. So in some sense, we can say that the scope of the course is quite narrow in a way. But again, the goal is to introduce topics, especially from a conceptual point of view. And for this, it is useful to simplify things so that the main conceptual points can be explained in full clarity and with enough time for you guys to understand and digest them. So now I'd like to talk about the prerequisites for this course. I do expect you guys to have good understanding of epidemiological study designs. So words like ecological studies, cross-sectional studies, cohort studies, case control studies, and randomized trials should be familiar to you. I also expect you guys to know about measures of occurrence and association, such as prevalence, incidence, odds, as well as prevalence ratio, relative risk, odds ratio, and et cetera. Prior understanding of basic concepts related to causality, such as what bias means, what is mediation, what is interaction on effect modification. Not necessarily how to perform mediation or interaction analysis, but rather a conceptual understanding of what those concepts mean will be useful. And also some basic statistics. So I expect you guys to understand what statistical association is, to know about basic hypothesis tests such as t-test, quasi-square test, and so on and also to have working knowledge of linear and logistic regression. By working knowledge, I mean knowledge that allows you to know when each one of those methods should be used and how to assess their assumptions. 
not necessarily the sort of math behind those methods. Having listed the prerequisites, guys, I would like to point out that most of the course does not require understanding of all of them. For example, even if you don't really know about statistics, you can understand most of the lectures. So even if you don't uh, fulfill all prerequisites listed here, I would encourage you to at least give a shot at the lectures so you can identify what you already know, identify things that you need to study further before you can fully understand the content. But I do believe that the course is accessible in most part for people that don't really fulfill all those prerequisites, especially the prerequisites related to statistics. So now I wanted to uh, briefly list the course contents so that you guys can know in advance what you can expect from the course. The course will be structured around five lectures, and each of those lectures will be subdivided into several videos. The first lecture will be about the potential outcomes model, starting from the definition of potential outcomes and ending with the required conditions for estimating causal effects. The second lecture will be about directed acyclic graphs, or DAGs for short. We will first introduce what DAGs are, and then end the lecture showing how DAGs can be used to define different sorts of bias, more specifically, confounding, selection, and information bias. Guys, don't worry if some of the words here are not familiar to you at this stage. Teaching what they mean is the whole point of this course. The third lecture will be about inverse probability of treatment weighting, which is an analytical tool for estimating causal effects. The third lecture will focus on confounding, and the fourth lecture will focus on selection bias. And the fifth and final lecture will be about the propensity score, which is a tool that we can use for inverse probability of treatment weighting, as well as other estimators for estimating causal effects in the situation where we have multiple covariate, that is, multiple variables that we will want to adjust for to eliminate bias. So that's it for this video, guys. Again, I'm really excited about this course, and I sincerely hope you guys enjoy it and find it useful. If you have any comments, questions, critics, want to interact in any way, please feel free to do so through the comment sections or through any other means that you want to communicate with me. I wish you the best of luck in your studies, and I'll see you in the next video.